Right, with the Premier League set to kick off this Friday with Burnley facing Man City at Duff Moor, let's go for my season of predictions. Obviously, we'll go from 20th place all the way through to, I think, we'll be champions come the end. And at the end of the video, I'll do my top goal scorer, assister, stuff like that. The little bits that may just be worth a good guess and see how much I can get right. Hopefully this year, compared to last year, my predictions will be a lot better. Some of them were good. A lot of it, or some of them were shit. Likes of film on Brentford were massively wrong. And also Chelsea, but hopefully this year will be a lot better. So, kicking off in last place, Sheffield United. I think that, looking at their squad, compared to last season, they've not strengthened. They've lost their best player in and I think that they'll probably go down with six or seven games to go. Six, seven, maybe even eight games. So you're probably talking mid-April. I think they'll see them relegated, I think. A Bama line will be massive for them to try and survive like they did the last time around, but I don't think they'll do it. I don't see the squad being anywhere near good enough. If they kept them die, I'd probably put them maybe 18th, because I think here they made that big difference. But even with them, I don't think they'd have stayed up. They've not spent the money to be convinced of others to stay up, I just think they're going to be whipping boys, I think. Them and the team I've put just above them, I think it's going to be, you'll see them on the end of th three, four, five no battens at least seven, eight times a season, whether that's home or away. I think Sheffield United are fucked this season. 19th place, I've put Luton. They have improved the squad, but I think, looking at it, I don't think it's enough to survive in the Premier League. I think they will shock a few teams this year, especially at home if they get to play at Kenworth Road. I think the way that the squad has went over the last couple of years, they've still got players that were in like League One with them. They've got that one player in Pazu, I think his name is. I've 100% butchered it, that's been there since the conference with them. But I think that some of the players are good quality Premier League players, but I don't think that there's enough in it to keep them up. Simple as that. I think, along with Sheffield United, they could probably be down with six or seven games to go. I just think that. In 18th place, to finish off the relegation zone, I've went with Bournemouth. I think they have saved the squad, but I think with teams above them having... Proper managers in this season, having a proper pre-season under them, I think they'll struggle. I think it will be, generally, this is going to be tight. I think it's going to be between 18th to 14th for the relegation zone. I do not think that, I think it's going to be the exact same as last season. Yeah, if like Southampton, which I think Chef you are completely gone. They'll be one of theirs where they'll be like... Yeah, you'll probably just try to take points off other teams to make it interesting. But I think between 18th to 14th, it's got to be either way. I went with Bournemouth. <coughs> Excuse me there. I went with Bournemouth just simply because I think that this time round, they'll struggle. Gary O'Neill gets sacked. They try to bring in somebody. I don't even know if Gary O'Neill is actually still there. That could be a big mistake, actually, to be fair. I think he has been put into it, but I think the squad, there's no one there. I could be wrong. I think I could be wrong, to be fair. It was between them and the next three teams, or the next two teams, but I went with Bournemouth. 17th, Everton. They're not strengthened. The only thing that will keep them up this year is if Sean Dyche can pull off a miracle and... They can keep Calvert Loon fit. That's it. They are struggling. They have not reinvested money to back Sean Dyche. I don't know if that's maybe a financial player thing. I don't know if it's the board being stubborn. They have brought in Dan Juma, but you're not really staying away with just Dan Juma. But they could be going into the very last game as they did last season. I think it's generally good. 16th, I went with West Ham. 
They've just agreed a deal to sign Ederson Alvarez. They've had two bids rejected for McTominay and Maguire. They've lost Eklund Rice. Which, he plays with Alvarez. I've not, I've not seen a lot of Alvarez, but as a good like for like replacement to what I would think. Probably more defensive than it is going forward. But I think, especially after winning the Conference League, going into Europe League football this season, I'm surprised that they didn't strengthen. I'm surprised that they, they'll they probably wait until they had the Declan Rice deal because they probably would have thought, oh, by start of July, within the first seven days, they'll have the deal wrapped up, go and spend money before people know that pretty much they need players. But they already knew that. Where the new Declan Rice is going to be moving on this summer. It was a bit obvious. But West Ham, along with Everton and Bournemouth, I think they'll be the three teams that will fight out for that last relegation spot. I think it'll be a real struggle. Unless, obviously, the, 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 the new one I'm recording is the 8th of fucking August. This is going to be on the 9th. Season starts on Friday, which is the 10th, I think. No, it's the 11th. I'm just special. But you've still got three, just over three weeks of the window. Who knows what happens. 15th, I've put Wolves. The squad's got weaker. But I think with Lopetegui in charge, you've seen the difference last year when he got a couple of players in the January and just done the round. They, just, they were no longer shit defensively. They were able to maybe not blow teams away, but not get blown away themselves. I think they could be dragged into it, but should be fine after that last international break in April. I think it will end of March, start of April. I think they'll be fine. 14th, I've went with Nottingham Forest. I think the squad is basically the exact same, apart from they made Chris Wood permanent and they signed a Langer. They've obviously lost Dean Henderson from his loan, Kelly Navas from his loan. So that could be a weak point. They are supposed to be signing Matt Turner. Basically, they've got a deal agreed. And obviously, they're going for him because they couldn't get Henderson. But I think the main squad, after they signed, I think it was like 32 players or something last season, I think they'll be fine. I think they've had, there'll be a full pre season with everyone. It's not going to be, you're signing players on deadline day, you're signing players in January. It's, you've got your squad, you're going to make maybe a couple of additions here and there just to reinforce certain areas. Probably another goalie, along with Turner, and maybe another striker. But I think they'll be fine. There was Steve Cooper and George, they're more than gusty. There were no issues at all. 13th, I've worked with Burnley. I think that the squad got stronger. I watched with tough more last season against Preston. I've seen multiple games of them in the Championship. I know it's just a Championship, but I think that the style of play that company's got them going with, I think it'll shock a lot of teams. The squad's got better. They've brought in more experienced players. They've pretty much bolstered where they need to bolster. I think this season, we could see a few shock results. I think they could go away to Anfield and nick a draw. They could play also at home and beat them. They could probably beat United at home. They could probably beat Ch uh, Chelsea away, Spurs away. I think this will be a season where Burnley take that next step. They were relegated. They changed completely. And they look to be a lot better for it. Twelfth, I've went with Fulham. As of right now, Mitrovic is still there. To whether he does play for them or no, it's got to be down to him. He did say he's never played for the club again after rejecting a Saudi Arabian bid. But if they lose him, I think they will be dragged right into the relegation battle. But if they keep him when he plays, and he does just throw the toys out of the pram, I think 12th place. But they do need to replace him because he wants to leave. You know he wants to leave. Get him gone. I know you want the money to replace him, but he will fuck it off. He will just be like, no, fuck yous. He won't just move. He wants to go and earn the money. Simple as that. Let him go. 11th place, I've went with Palace. I think 
It's the same old way Palace. I think we were watching this season with our attacking talent. They have lost Saha. They've got good young players in Eze, Olise, Gehi, players like that. You have Edward being better. You have Boy Matea being better. You'll see a better start to the season compared to what it was under Vieira last year. But Palace are Palace. I think they'll be fine. Palace are pretty much anywhere between 10th to 13th. You'd pretty much predict them in. That's pretty much it. I got, I said 12th last year and they got 11th. I think they'll get 11th this year. 10th, moving on to the top 10 now. 10th, Brentford. I think they've got stronger. They have lost Ivan Tony till January because of betting problems. We had a gambling ban, which is bullshit because the FA just is one rule for one and one, the other rule for all. I can get into the political side of it, but I cannot really be arsed. If they added a couple more players to points to help ease the burden of losing Ivan Tony, but you've seen towards the end of last year when they lost Tony. I think they'll be fine. It could go either way. They could either shut the bed or be absolutely fine, comfortable, and there is not an issue at all. But there'll only be wait to be seen. Ninth, I've went with Spurs. I think Spurs, you've got a couple more players in that will improve the side. I do think Paul Chicago's a good manager, but I think the eight sides I've went with above them. They've got better, and if you lose Harry Kane, you're fucked. Harry Kane basically means if they keep him, they could get out, say, maybe six, maybe fifth. But if they lose him, season's over. Season's over before it's even begun, basically. They don't have any European football, which could help them, but I don't think it will. Eighth place, I went with Brighton. The only reason I've went with Brighton two places lower than what they did last season because the two teams that put above them I think have got better. They could lose Sancido but the pair to think of the best players because I'm saying the Chelsea say, he'll probably be shit and then they're like oh we've got 120 million or whatever. Sorry, I don't know that one. Why the fuck is Alexa speaking? We slag sharp. But I they can say on the Chelsea and they could be shit. But I think with Europe League football, they could struggle up until the January period. But I think by then, they could be either way. Could be comfortable, could be fucked. Let's see what happens. Seventh place, I've went with Chelsea. I think because they've got Pochettino. They have made a couple of additions. You've got Nkunku, you've got others. You've got Diase replacing Ben Ashili. Whatever you pronounce the name, I'm not... Confident with all of your series, you can tell that. I think that the way that they'll set up this year will be fine. I think with everything that Chelsea's went through after finishing 12th last year, no European football, but a proven Premier League manager, and with the players they have, I don't. I think they'd have to sign a striker unless they give Lukaku another chance, which I don't think they will. I don't think Jack Nicholas Jackson will do well. And King King is now ruled out for three and a half months because of a knee injury. He's, I think it's a torn MCL. I know it's an MCL, I just don't know to the level he's done it. But I think seventh place for Chelsea is pretty much realistic. Especially after last season. Sixth place, I've went with Aston Villa. They've got better. They've got confidence well, qualifiers. I think they could be an outside shape for the Champions League for next season. I think when you look at it, the squad has got better. You've got Pau Torres in, you've got Musa Diaby in, you have Paul Watkins and Danny Ings firing. You're going to be comfortable. You're going to be comfortable this year. I think they'll go up to group stage football for Europa League next year. Unless they win the conference. Which it could be a possibility, but you never know. But they could have a real outside chance of Champions League football, I generally think that. I think the way that Unai Emery's got them playing, you've seen last season as soon as he came in, I think they are third for the most points taken from Emery's appointment. And yeah, I think they'll be a good team to watch this year. 
You see them last year. Multiple teams will struggle against them in the top six. Could be the, I think it's going to be the exact same this year. Moving on to fifth place. I've went with Liverpool. I think they have got their better midfield. But I don't think the defence has got better. I think the attack wise. Nunes could come good. Gakpo will be a good addition for them. Obviously in the January window. Having a proper six months and the pre-season. But I think defensively. You see last year when there was a Kanati was out. Joe Gomez was out. You had Van Dijk struggling. Trent was struggling. Robbo was struggling. They've signed two new midfielders, which McAllison's almost lie is definitely good to replace. Not really a place for Bino. To replace Henderson, Milner. I would still say you need another two midfielders. Two defenders, play a centre back and a right back. And then a striker. Or like a wide player. But I think with them having Euro play for the first time in ages. I don't think they get Champions League next season unless they go on a stupid run where they get lucky with injuries and they just start battering teams because of it. Fourth place, I went with Newcastle United. I think they've added Tonali. They've added that Harvey Barnes. There's a busy Ashley Barnes. But Champions League could prove a challenge, but I think they'll be fine. I think that... You see, towards the end of last season, they were starting to stutter, but they just go over the line in the end. I think that it could be Newcastle get 6th place, K 7th, but I think back-to-back 4th -back place finishes is on the cards for Newcastle. 3rd place, I went with Manchester United. I think we've got Stronger. You've signed Hoyland, Onana, Mount. Could sign Amrabat. I could maybe sign one or two more players. Just depends on who leaves the club, basically. I think... Last year, seen an FA Cup final, runner-up, Campbell Cup winner, third place with the Europa League quarter-finals, should have been semi-finals, but that's a David De Gea and I agree with you. But I think this year, you will see a difference. I would hope that Serena and Anna, Mesa Mount and Hoyland, you really build a spine of the team, which next year, for the season, Back to back, third place, let's say. Try and get to the Champions League quarterfinals, depending on obviously the group. You get in the last 16 if you get through. Try and win both the League Cup and FA Cup again this year. But wouldn't really mind sacking them both off to push on in the league to try for a second and even have an outside hope of a title. Now, second place, I've went with Arsenal. I think. You've got Stronger with Rice, Havertz and Yuri and Timber. But I think losing Xhaka, that leadership in the midfield, I don't think the squad's ready for a title yet. I could be wrong, but I think we're sitting now, that up and running. You've got Haaland that I time to settle in. City, I've now seen Kova, Sitch and Vaudio. I think... Oh, it's all going to struggle. Especially being back in Champions League for this season. It's going to the next season. It's this season. Starts in three days. I think they'll struggle. I don't think they'll do anything near it. And obviously moving on to the Champions City. As I just said, they signed Vardio. They've signed Kovacic. They'll probably maybe add one or two more players before the end of the window. Depending on kind of outgoings. But with Haaland, I think he'll fire them to another title. And I think he'll be more than comfortable than last year. Now, that's the end of the predictions. Now move on to my top goal scorer, assister, player of the season, young player, and clean sheets. Top goal scorer, I think Haaland will win a back-to-back -back seasons. Don't need to give any reasons to justify it. Apart from Haaland is Haaland. We know he done last year. I think he'll score probably 45 goals in the league this year. And break it. Break the record. Top assister. I think it'll be De Bruyne again. I think he'll just be finding Haaland a lot more this season. 
I think that site will be a lot more clinical. Simple as that. For those who can't really give any explanation. Player of the year, I don't need to anyway. Player of the year, Haaland again. Simple as that, Haaland. Young player of the year. I don't think Haaland now qualifies for it. So I've went with Bakayo Saka. I think he was unlucky last year not to get it. Just because Haaland qualified and he did, and he obviously was in the same category as Haaland. So I think that's the only reason. And I think for clean sheets this season, if everyone in the league, I think it'll be Andrew Onana. I think you'll see a better defensive side from United this season. You'll see more of where it's like, you know, winning games 3-1, you're winning 3-0. So, drawing games 1 each, you're winning 2-1, you're then winning 1-0, winning 2-0. You'd stop conceding stupid goals. You will get caught out. You've seen that, like, you, you've seen how high he plays. But that's the way Tenag wants to play. You back the manager, you back the goalie, they get rid of a club legend in David De Gea, and they signed Onana for, I think it's like 43.9 million up front, be like 4 million in add ons. So I think that's the way we'll see it this year. But, with that, that's my predictions for the 2023 2024 Premier League season that kicks off this Friday night. At Tough Moor, as Burnley welcome the champions and the treble winners, Manchester City, as Vincent Company will see his old team, he will see his old manager in Pep Guardiola. Unfortunately, I'm walking so I can't watch it. But with that, that's the end of the video. If you did enjoy, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and with that, I'll catch you in the next one. Leave in the comments below your predictions and take care. Goodbye.